Side quests are one of the many things the Zelda series is known for. Whether it be classics like returning the Kukos in Kakariko Village or ridding a farm of alien invaders, there's always those select few that stand out amongst the rest. You know the good ones, quests that pull you further into the world of Hyrule, the ones with that extra dose of Zelda charm. Look. Past titles make it easy to see those diamonds in the rough, but Breath of the Wild has a whopping 76 side quests in its main game, making it rather easy to miss out on those worthwhile adventures. In honor of Zelda Month, I've teamed up with my good friend Game Over Jesse and the ever so talented Hylian Luke to count down my picks for the top 5 side quests in Breath of the Wild. Please make note that this list is almost entirely subjective. You know, funny enough, it's okay to have your own opinion in 2019. So if you disagree, all I ask is that you be polite and leave your own list down in the comments below. Let's get started. The very first side quest we'll be going over is Misko, the Great Bandit. After leaving the Great Plateau, you'll most likely make your way to the Dueling Peak Stable, where you can speak to two NPCs recounting a riddle they heard about the hidden treasure of the bandit Misko. Prison will nearly spill the beans on the duo's secret, just before Dak confronts you for butting into their business. After talking to the two, you'll find that they're actually treasure hunters that recently got a scoop on the whereabouts of the legendary Misko's treasure. Speak to them once more, and Dak will offer up their information on a silver platter. Confident that you won't be able to solve the riddle, he'll sell you the information for a measly 100 rupees. Pay the man and he'll give you the tried and true my uncle works for Nintendo story, first telling you the riddle. The little twins step over the little river. My cave rests above the river's source. Luckily in this case, Dak's story holds some truth. He might have come up on 100 rupees, but the loot this quest offers makes up for it in the end. Once you've acquired the quest, head southeast of the Dueling Peak Stable to the waterfall near the back of Hickley Woods. From here, make your ascent and continue up the waterfall until you reach a bombable wall. Inside, you'll find the loot of the Great Misko. Hidden within the cave is one piece of amber, one piece of opal, one luminous stone, two sapphires, three smoked hardy truffles, a seared steak, a roasted bird's drumstick, a soldier's spear, and a flame blade. Out of every side quest in the game, Misko the Great Bandit has the most bang for your buck when it comes to the reward. It's simple yet satisfying, and it's a great example of what a proper quest should be. For those reasons, the mysterious bandit made it onto the list. Though I recommend continuing the story thread in the DLC, which puts the spotlight on why Misko became a legend in the first place. Diving deeper into the lore of a game is something side quests are rather useful for. And our second pick does just that. The quest, Zora Stone Monuments, is essentially a retelling of the history of the Zora tribe and their past involvement with the Kingdom of Hyrule. This is a post to Divine Beast quest, so you'll need to have already defeated Varuta in order to obtain it. To begin, speak with an NPC named Giotto, who's located directly beneath King Dwarfin's throne room. Supposedly, long ago the Zora King created ten stone monuments scattered throughout Zora's domain. It's been so long since their original construction that a number of them have begun to slowly deteriorate, causing Jaito to feel the need to create a book as backup. Due to his age and the sheer number of monuments, Jaito can't make it around the domain as fast as he once could. In gaming fashion, you'll be sent on a fetch quest to locate and read each of these stone monuments. You can find the location of each listed on the map above. By visiting the monuments, you are tiny bits of information about not only the Zora past, but also Hyrule's. What's interesting is that the Zora have one of the longest lifespans in all of Hyrule, so some of what is told on these structures is older than even that of the first coming of Calamity Ganon. You learn about the founding of the Domain, how the Hylians and Zoras worked together to stop the constant flooding that used to plague the land, and you can find out about Princess Ruto. 
all the way back from the era of the Hero of Time. Along with packing in all this lore, Zora Stone Monuments also comes with a rather generous reward of one diamond, which sells for 500 rupees. Details like these make places like Zora's domain feel vibrant and alive, pulling the player in that much more. Because the monuments aren't spread out too far from one another, the side quest can be done in a timely manner, and the reward is worth it for the amount of story value that comes along with it. In the middle of our list is the statue's bargain, one of the creepier side quests in the game. This one can be located in Hateno Village. You start the quest by either finding a boy named Tebow and following him to Furley Pond where he'll show you the horn statue, or you can simply walk up and talk to the statue directly. I prefer finding Tebow as it gives the quest a little more depth. Speaking to the statue, you'll find that it's actually a demon that was cursed by the goddess Hylia for meddling in the trade of life and power. Of course, even centuries of being trapped inside a stone cage hasn't taught this demon a lesson. Upon your first encounter, you'll have one of your heart vessels swiped in return for the quest. Speak to the demon one last time, and it will tell you of its offer. Through this statue, you are able to exchange both your heart and stamina vessels for 100 rupees each. You can then reallocate them whichever way you want by buying them back for 120 rupees a pop. The horn statue has one of the best features in the entire game. Being able to trade in essence for hard earned rupees, and vice versa, can help in multiple situations both early on and later in your journey. That by itself earned the statue's bargain a slot on this list, but it's the bonus features that placed it so high at number 3. After completing the side quest, you have access to a one of a kind glitch that allows you to fully max out not only your hearts, but also your stamina meter. Using the statue in tandem with this glitch allows you to launder spirit orbs, making it possible to bypass all of the shrines in order to get the master sword and it can even be used to print rupees. That finishes up number 3. If you want to learn about the glitch, go ahead and click the card up top to be brought over to my video covering the subject. Number 2 goes to the quest Hylian Homeowner. As the title suggests, this quest allows you to purchase your very own home in Breath of the Wild. You start by speaking to Balsan, who can be found demolishing an abandoned house on the outskirts of Hateno Village. Balsan will explain that the house has been abandoned for a number of years, and for that reason, the townsfolk have decided to tear the place down. You can offer to purchase the house on the spot. Balsan will jokingly ask you for 50 grand, and then bring it down to a reasonable 3,000 rupees with the addition of 30 bundles of wood. Bring Balsan his precious rupees and supplies, and the keys are yours. That's not where this story ends though. In order to fully complete the quest, you'll need to fork over another 1400 rupees. It's well worth the price in the end. For all of your troubles, you'll get some furniture added in for free, courtesy of Balsam Construction. Plus you can display all of your precious equipment for the world to see. You may need to spend some money on this quest, but who said quality was free? Balsan and his crew earned their spot amongst the greats. In fact, Hudson leads us into our number one pick, which is attached to the second portion of Hylian Homeowner. But before we move on to the number one side quest in Breath of the Wild, here are some honorable mentions. Leviathan Bones, the eighth heroine, priceless maracas, and a shady customer. The best side quest out of the bunch is From the Ground Up. A few of you veteran players probably already know about this one, but for those that don't, From the Ground Up is a side quest in which you literally help build a new settlement called Terrytown in the Akala region of Hyrule. Luke mentioned earlier that to begin this quest you must first have started the quest Hylian Homeowner. After you've purchased the house from Bolson, he will talk about sending Hudson to the Akala region to start building brand new homes. Shortly after, speak to Hudson, who should still be sitting out front of your empty abode. Hudson will then get up and head for his new job site, landing you the quest. From here, I suggest going and collecting as much wood as you possibly can. You'll need about 110 bundles of wood to get the job done. 
Once you have all of the required materials, you can make your way to the empty plot of land that will soon become Terrytown. Talk to Hudson and give him the first 10 bundles of wood. He'll ask you to go out into the world and recruit a Goron who can help you bust apart the rocks that litter the land Terrytown will be built on. Go to the southern Goron mines and seek the help of a Goron named Grayson. Following that, go back to Terrytown and speak with Hudson again to get the next part of the quest. As you continue, Hudson will need the help of three more individuals. Repeat the process with the next set of NPCs, located at the Karakara Bazaar, Rito Village, and lastly, Zora's Domain. On the very last one, Hudson will ask you for 50 bundles of wood, and then he'll inform you that he's recently gotten engaged. To tie the knot, Hudson needs you to track down someone who can marry the couple. Teleport over to Zora's Domain and find an older Zora gentleman named Capson, who will be more than happy to do the job. Now, go back to Terrytown to receive Hudson's final request. Appropriately so, he would like his closest friends to join him on his special day. So the very last thing you must do for him is hand deliver Bolson and Carson's invitation to the wedding. Simply go back to your house and you'll find the two loitering on your front lawn, as per usual. Fill them in on what's going on and go back to Terrytown one last time to watch the beautiful ceremony. I genuinely hope my wedding is as magical as this one was. For all of the time and energy you sunk into that side quest, you'll get three shiny diamonds, a grand total of 1500 rupees in terms of currency. You also get all kinds of perks too. For one, you get access to all of the standard shops in the town, which is super useful. And you also get access to Grante's special armor shop, which has all of the rare outfits you may have sold along your journey. The guy even sells replica Hylian shields after it breaks, so make sure to check out his shop. Not to mention, through the completion of this quest, you can unlock two more side quests, a parent's love and hobbies of the rich. I guess the rewards for those two quests could technically be added to from the ground up, but I think the best, most convoluted quest of them all takes the golden ticket as is. That wraps up this Breath of the Wild Top 5. Let me know your favorite side quests in the comments below. Remember, shrine quests and side quests are two different things. Maybe I'll cover those next time. Hit that like button if you enjoyed my countdown, and for those of you that are new, subscribe to be alerted when I post a brand new Zelda video. Special thanks goes to both Hylian Luke and Game Over Jesse. If you're a fan of quality Zelda content, make sure to check out both of their channels listed in the description below. Thank you all so very much for watching, have a wonderful rest of your week. Catch you on the next video. Peace out.